Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and in this one we're going to be looking at building one of these which is of course a cycloidal drive. In order to achieve this we're going to be using basically a very minuscule amount of Expresso, there's not a great deal actually, uh, and that is all there is to it. There's nothing else going on here, it's purely Expresso. That's what we're about in this tutorial, so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. The most complex aspect about this actually is the building of it because this is a precision engineering job. So we've got to be very careful how we put this together. We start with thinking about the circumferal length or the mean circumferal length actually of a circle which we're going to use to build the actual ring, the outer ring gear. That's where we're going to start. What we're, what we're going to do in order to do this, we'll grab a hold of an arc make its plane XZ. Now its radius is going to be 1. So it's going to be very very small. And we'll select our object so that we can see it. We've also got to work with its start and end angles. Now these start and end angles they're very very important. So there's the start here, we'll do this first, we'll say that this is going to be minus 5 and the end 185 degrees and this is going to allow us if you imagine the circle coming through here a larger circle that's going to allow us to sit this absolutely on the circumference of the circle and that's why I've set that up like that you'll see in the minute why now we need 20 teeth for our ring gear and that means that we need an outer arc and we're also going to need an inner arc going the other way and we'll continue this obviously around the circle. So we know that we're going to need 40 arcs if we need 20 teeth. So we've got a radius of one centimeter that means we've got a diameter of two. So two times 40 is 80. So 80 is going to be the circumferal length of our circle. We now need to reverse engineer this to get to the stage where we can find the radius of the circle. So let's get the calculator. So we know that 80 is the, is the actual circumferal length of the circle. So if we divide this by pi, we get 25.464. And if we divide by 2, we've now got the radius of the circle. So if we bring a circle on and give it a radius of 12.732, we're about right. So let's get a circle and give it a radius of 12.732. We'll also set it in the XZ plane, hit H so that we can see everything. The next step is to arrange these arcs around the circumference of the circle. So we'll reach for our duplicate tool we want 19 copies because we need 20 of these. In our options we can select mode and say along spline and grab a hold of the circle. We do need to enable rotation and it needs to be plus X. That's what we need to use in there. And finally we can say apply. And straight away we've got our arcs perfectly arranged around the circumference of the circle. We can drop the original arc into here and make a copy. So I'll command drag to make a copy. Again, I need an, another 20 of these, but this time they need to be arranged around the inside of the circumference of the circle. So we need to work with our start and end angles and we need to say 185 for the start and 355 for the end angle. Straight away you can see that it's placed on the inside of the circumference there and it's, you can see that this is going to work. So once again let's reach for the duplicate tool and hit new transformation. And that's fine we've got them set up. We just need to drop this into here 
The only thing is we need to rotate them. Now let's just get the rotate tool. And at the moment, the copies are not in the right place. So let's just select all of these and we'll remove them and then zero this out. And then we can just select them all again and drop them back in. A little bit tedious this, but it's just the way it is. OK, so now we're ready and we can we should be able to rotate this. Now, let's just. We can do it pretty much by eye and that if we just make that minus 81. Should be absolutely spot on. If We just zoom a little closer just to see one of them. We can see that it is. That's absolutely correct. So that's fine. We've got that far and we've got the actual shape that we need for our outer ring gear. The next step is to select all of these. Open the original arcs up for the out the outers and hold shift and select all of these. Hit C to make them editable and then we can select connect objects and delete. And that takes us a step closer to where we need to be. So we've now got a single arc. If we switch to point mode, what we haven't really got is a single object. So we've got to join all of these together. As I said, it's a little bit of a, a tedium here, but there's not much you can do about it. It's just the way we have to do it. So if I switch to my top view, so hit F2 and then H to see everything, we can think about sorting this out. So obviously we've got to weld these points together. So if we just get a hold of our selection tool, switch off visible only, we can come down to our tools here in our, in our spline and we can say remove weld. So first thing to do, grab our selection tool and select this, hit space bar, click, hit space bar, select, hit the space bar and then weld again. And this is what we've got to keep doing. We've got to rinse and repeat until we've done the whole thing. So by the power of editing, I will get this done and then come back to you. And we've done it. We now have a single spline. So that's our first complete arc. So we're looking good for this one. Moving on from here, we've got to think about adding some more elements into the scene. The first of which will be the arc for the cycloidal disc. That's our next port of call. It's the same process as we've completed here, actually, but it needs one less tooth. This has got 20 teeth. The cycloidal disc needs 19. And as a result of that, it will be a smaller diameter. So let's work this one out. As we did before, we'll bring in an arc. We will set it up in the XZ plane. And this time we'll make its, we'll make its radius one for now. And we will set it up again with a start angle of minus five and an end angle of 185. What we'll also do is just move it in the scene. So we'll bring it across to here. Now we can see that it's exactly the same size if we just hit O for object. What we'll do is actually change this. So let's try point 0.9. Well, that looks reasonably good, doesn't it? But what I'm going to actually do is make it 0.85. And now we can see that if we place that on the circumference of the circle, that's given us enough clearance, which is is fine. But of course, we need to work out the size for the inner arcs as well. So let's just create another one. Again, we'll set this up with a start position of or a start angle, I should say, of 185 and an end angle of 355. That gives us the same setup as we had before. But we've got to move this over and we should also rotate it into position. So let's just rotate it a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. I'm not going to do this 100% accurately. As long as it's near enough, that's good enough. 
And of course our diameter here has got to be changed. It's got to be bigger. So let's uh, try 1.1. Now 1.1 I think is going to work. If we just move that over. 1.1 actually probably should work. Because it does need to be closer to here. I'm not worried about the fact that there's a bigger gap here than there's a smaller gap there. That's how this needs to work. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say we need 0.85 and 1.1. So that's fine. What I'll do here, we'll just click on here, go into our coordinates and just zero that out for now. Great. So we've got our two arcs worked out. Now we can see if we, we've got a radius of 1.1 and a radius of 0.85. So if we add those two together, we get 1.95. So let's reach for the calculator again. So if we've got 1.95 and we want this to be times 38 this time, we, we, it was times 40 last time, but this time it will be times 38. So multiplied by 38, that gives us 74.1. Again, we can divide this by pi and divide by two. And this time we get 11.793. So if we create a circle, give it a radius of 11.793 and set it up in an XZ plane, we can see that we're just about spot on because it's just touching the apexes of our arcs. Actually, if we get a little closer, you can see that it's just inside them, but that's fine. That's accurate enough. So all is good. OK, that's great. So we've got our circle worked out. So again, we can repeat the process that we did before. We can start placing these arcs around the circumference of our circle. I'll just rearrange the viewport so that it's just about where it was before. So let's grab our tools and reach for the duplicate tool. And then do some work in here. Now this time we don't want 19 copies. We just want 18. We're going to place this around circle one. And everything else is the same. So we can just reach for our tool, apply. That's got those positioned around the circumference of our circle. Again, we can just drop this into there, reach for our second arc, go back to our tools, duplicate, new transform. We get exactly the same thing, but of course this time these are bigger. Drop this into our copies. Yet again, we're going to have to take these out and reposition our copies in the center. Let's just get the rotate tool so that I can see where I am. Make that zero and that zero. Bring this back up to the top and drop these back into it. And then we're ready to rotate this. Let's try 9.5 and 9.5 as you can see has, has rotated everything into the correct place and now we've set up our second arc we've got well we haven't completed the arc of course we've still got to do that process but we've we've set it up pretty well now what I'm going to do is let me see just thinking about what we can do if we select both of these Can we do it? No, I'll tell you what, what I'll do first. I think I'll set the thing up first. I will actually make our arc here disappear so that it's not in the way. I'll also make the circles disappear for now. And what I'll do is what I did before, just select all of these and all of these. I'll make them editable and hit connect objects and delete so that we've got just a single arc. Actually, what we can do there is remove that arc from there 
and we can move, remove this art from here and take away these because we don't need them anymore. Okay, so I'm ready to start doing the do with this arc. So once again, I'll switch to my top view. Select weld in here and I can then alternate between the two. So once again, I can select, hit the space bar, click. And it's the same process as I've done before. So I'll get all of this done and then come back to you by the power of editing. And we've got it. Two perfect splines now made. That's fantastic. So let's switch back to our 3D view. Hit F1. And there we have it. That's complete. Just bring back the other arc. The next thing we've got to do is reposition this particular arc and get it in the, in the correct place. So we're going to bring it downwards along the x-axis. So let's just pull this down somewhere about there. Now let me see what we've got in our coordinates. So at the moment we're at point, we can take the z back to zero, we're at point 0.942. Now I happen to know that point 0.93 one seven is absolutely spot on so I'm going to use that and there you have it that's what we need so you need to set this up like this because the, the golden rule here is that the teeth need to be in contact pretty much all the way round I mean they don't have to be absolutely spot on as long as the vast majority of them are touching the actual ring cog here the ring gear some of them aren't it doesn't that doesn't matter as I say but at the top here they all are these tips are touching and down the bottom here we've got side points touching that's good that's fine that's what we want great so we've got our two arcs complete thus far we can bring these two back in now we've got to think about adding some circles within the actual arc here. So we just switch this one off so that we can clarify that. So for the cycloidal disc, we do need some circles within it and they've got to be positioned accurately. So that's the next step for us to think about what we're going to be doing there. I'll make these two circles disappear so that we're just left with the arc and bring in another circle. I'm going to group this into my arc. I'm going to make it seven in the radius and place it in the XZ plane. And then in the coordinates, I'm just simply going to zero it out so that it's in the center of the arc. Now this circle is, we're going to position six smaller circles around the circumference of this circle. That's what we're going to be using it for. So it's just a guide. So if we just remove it from here, we'll call this guide just so that we distinguish it and then I'll bring in some more circles or a circle anyway once again I'm going to change its actual radius and of course set it up in the XZ plane now it's radius that's going to be important because we know that the arc we've moved it along the x-axis by 0.9317 so let's get the calculator and say 0.9317. Now we need this number. We need to multiply this by two. So 1.863 will be okay. 1.863, that will be the radius of this circle. So one point I think I said 863. Let's just double check that though. <laughs> Let's just get the uh, calculator. Yeah, 1.863, that's what I did say. Okay, 
So this we're going to duplicate once again, but this time we want five copies. We want to duplicate it along our guide, uh, guide circle and we can just hit apply. And now we've got those circles in the correct positions. So we can just drop those into there for now and we can make them editable. And what we'll also do, they're going to, they're, they're actually going to be part of this. So we can actually drop them beneath the arc. If I grab, grab a hold of all of them, just drop them beneath our arc. We can then select everything and we can think about making these part of the same thing. We're not going to do that quite yet because I still need another circle in the middle. So we'll worry about that in a minute, but we've got them set up and they're ready to go. So what do we need to do next? Well, we need another circle the same size as the guide. So I'm going to command drag to copy that. And then I'm going to zero it out. And this is also going to be a guide. and I'll leave it as guide one, because what we're going to do now is bring in another circle. We'll set this up in the XZ plane. And this time we'll look at where we've got our guide, copy this number, go into a new circle that we've just brought in and give this to the radius. So that's how big our radius needs to be. And then all we need to do is arrange circle three on guide one. So once again, duplicate tool. We've already got it selected. It's already set up. Hit new transform and we're there. Or are we? Not quite because we need to set them up along guide one. So let's just do that duplication again. Go into our option. We've still got it on guide. I should have set it to guide one. Let's just bring that in. Go to our tool, apply, and now they're set up correctly. Now what you're hopefully seeing here is that these are touching the circumferences of the outer circles, and that's exactly what they need to do. These are actually going to form pins. That's what we're going to be using them for, but not quite yet. But we've got them set up and that's the most important thing. So we'll drop that into our circles. So I'm going to call these pin circles so that I know what they are. That can be removed now. There's no need to keep it. What I'll also do, I'm going to just make the guides disappear. And I'll also make the pin circles disappear so that we get back to here. We now need to think about this center circle. We need to bring that in. So again, I'll bring in another circle, set it to the XZ plane. Try making it five, which is too big, but it also needs to be grouped into our arc and zeroed out. That's fine. Just remove it from, well, I'll just remove it from there and put it down the bottom actually, because it will ultimately be made editable. And then all of these will be grouped together into one object. So we know that that's slightly too big. So let's work out the size that it should be. Three is probably looking quite good, but we'll make it 3.5. I think 3.5 will work fine. And that gives us a reasonable clearance around it. And we've got a large enough area then to be able to put our drive shaft, which is an, when we've got an eccentric bearing that's got to go in there as well. So we've got enough room to do those things there. Okay, so we'll make this circle editable group all of these together into one. So we'll select objects, connect and delete. At the moment, we've got open splines. All we need to do to correct that is close spline. And that's fine. We've got one object and it's all looking very, very nice. So that's the spline complete to make our cycloidal disc. And we can see we've got our pins ready to go here, which can be put on our output.
disk our output shaft and everything else can be built around that so that's all looking very good and we can move on to our next step we can now think about making things three-dimensional so I'll make the pin circles disappear and I'll also make this arc disappear actually so that we've got nothing at the moment and I'll bring back our ring gears arc and also this circle I'll give the circle a radius of 15 and make it editable drop it beneath the arc select them both and connect objects and delete close the spline and now we have a profile for our ring gear ready to go holding down my option key I can select an extrude and then in the object tab give it an offset of two in the caps tab 0.1 for the rounding so just a millimeter of rounding and that's looking great that's nice I'll also change my display to garage shading lines and isoparms because it will give us a nice look we can then call this ring gear moving on from here I'm going to bring back my cycloidal discs arc select it and hold down option again select and extrude and in the object tab give this an offset of two and in the caps 0.1 for the rounding and we've got those two complete and looking very very beautiful fantastic so we've got that far we can call this cycloidal disc and that's all ready to go moving on from here we can start to think about the output stage the output assembly so for a start we can bring back our pin circles and what we'll do is select all of these make them editable and connect objects and delete so that we've got just one item we can drop this out of here and now we're ready to move on from here what I'll do first is drop this down in the coordinates I'll just say minus I'll go two point well just I'll do two for the moment I'll do two I'll sort this out afterwards I'll just do two for now that's fine and then again hold the option key down click on extrude they're much much too big we'll make them something like four for the offset I think and then in my caps I will go point one and we've got a nice rounding on there okay brilliant so we've got it that far what we can now think about doing is creating a backing plate for this another disc basically that's going to connect to our pins and then we'll also need a cylinder just for the shaft the actual output shaft okay so we'll bring in another circle once again set it up in the XZ plane and we'll make it say 14 in the radius we can then hold down our option key once again select extrude and we can make this well we can say two again for the offset I think that'll be okay in the caps again I'll give it a point one rounding and then what we'll do here is just drop this down once again by two rather minus two and that sets it up pretty much perfectly and then what we can do here where we've got our pins we can just well, we can rename those pins actually and this we'll call output assembly I'm going to call it that because I'm going to be placing the pins under here as well and I'm also going to get a cylinder make it a radius of about 2.5 that should be fine for that and a height of say 10 and in the caps I'll fill it in again it'll say 0.1 that'll be fine go into my right hand view and I'll just drop this down until it's about there that'll do fine for that okay so we've got our output assembly ready to go and that's all looking good so we can just drop this under here we can just call that the shaft 
that's fine. So that's all great and that's that's all worked out for us. So we've got the cycloidal disc, we've got the ring gear and we've got the output assembly all ready to go. The next thing we need to worry about is putting an input shaft with an eccentric bearing in here set up correctly and that will complete the build and then we can move on to the espresso. The first thing I'll bring in is another cylinder. I'm going to give it a radius of one and a height of 10. I'll move it up five. Let's just see where we are. Yeah, I think that's OK. I'll copy this. So command drag to copy. And I will give it a height of two and radius of 2.25. I'll also offset it in its coordinates. Now it needs to be zero. In fact, it may need to be minus, yeah, in fact, minus one on the Y, minus one. And it needs to be offset by 0.9317 to match up with the cycloidal disc, but not in the Z. Let's just copy that and paste it into the X and we can zero out the Z. OK, now it's in the correct position. I'll select both of these and in the caps, I'll fill it them again 0.1 so that we keep everything consistent. And then all I'm going to do is just move this cylinder down very, very slightly. And then I can group this into there and call this shaft. And we'll call this bearing. Now we're not quite finished yet because we need to put a race around the side of this. And we've got to create the parts to do that next. I'll bring in a profile. Now the profile needs to be a U shape. So we'll set that up. And its height needs to be 2. B needs to be point three and S and T need to be point one. So we'll set those up like that. OK, let's just see where we are with this. We'll just set it in the ZY plane. OK, so we can see that we've got it. In fact, we, we need to zoom in a little bit closer just to see that. So we've got it set up there. What we need to do then is drop this profile into the bearing and we need to zero it out along the X. If we go into our top view, we should see that that's now lining up with the center of our bearing, which is exactly what it's doing. And we can just drop this over here. We're, we're doing this by eye because it's not that crucial. Um, as long as this is near enough, it's good enough. So just about on that line will be fine. And then it's it's obviously too high. So we need to position it and we need to position it as probably, I think it's going to be, so that I've put it at zero there. It needs to be minus one, minus one. Okay, and that's in, it, in the correct position. Moving on from here, then I can command drag to copy, rotate this through 180. Once again, I'll switch to my top view, so F2, zoom out a little bit so that I can see where we are, and then I'll just position this just about on this point there. OK, that's great. And now I've got my profiles in the correct positions and we're ready to move on from here. And these will form the inner and outer casings of the roller bearing race. The first thing I'm going to do is reactivate circle one and I'm also going to drop it into the bearing and zero it out along the X. So it's now in the correct place. So we can take it out of there and we can also take this profile out and we're going to sweep this profile around the circle. So holding down my option key, I can select sweep and then drop the circle underneath. At the moment, it's much too big. We need to make its radius 2.25. And now it's almost correct. The reason it's not quite there yet is because the profile actually needs to be in the XY plane. And now it's correct. Moving on from here, we can drop this down along the Y axis, we can drop it down to minus four. And now it's in the correct spot. 
we'll rename this in a casing and we can drop it into our bearing this profile we can remove from our bearing and we can command drag to copy another circle this time we're going to sweep this profile around this circle so we'll put the profile in its XY plane to get it set up and the circle will make 3.5 we'll select the profile once more and select a sweep and then drop the circle in there and let's see where we are now what have we got if I can just solo this sweep object okay so it's it's correct it's it's just not the right size so 3.5 was too big for the circle let's just go back and set the circle up slightly differently let's make this 3.4 in fact it could be 3.3 well 3.3 is not too bad actually I think to be honest it's not that that's the problem because this looks to me if we just solo it again yeah it's wrong it should be facing the opposite way so we've got to do some work with the sweep let's take that off if we select the sweep what we need to do in the rotation here we need to bring these down to the bottom that sorted that out and we can then raise this sweep up let's just select it go into coordinates and make it zero and now it's at the correct height all we've got to do now is make it slightly bigger so let's go get a circle and go back to our object and make this 3.5 again and I think it should be right yeah okay it is that's fantastic it is correct and everything is lining up as it should brilliant so that's done and we can call this outer casing and that's ready to go and this can actually group into the cycloidal disk We'll put this under the arc. That's fine. Okie dokie, that's good, all working well. Moving on from here, we've got to create the actual roller bearings. So the first thing to do is bring in a cylinder. Make it much smaller. We'll make it in the height something like 1.8. That should be fine for the actual height. And the radius will make two for now. Well, in fact, it's got to be much smaller than that. But what we'll, we'll do is, is do some work within here. We've got to put a circle actually in the middle of that. So we'll, we'll do that in a minute. So what we'll do, so we've got two there, which is way too much. Let's make it something like 0.6 and drag this over here and see how we're looking. What we'll do is drop it into the bearing. We can zero it out that's fine and then we can position this somewhere here and see if we're anywhere near correct well we're not far off I think we can go smaller we can go something like I think point four maybe point five yeah I think point five should be just about the right size and if we move it down in the coordinates to put to just zero we should be correct that should fit in there okay and it should be pretty much engineered the way it needs to be if we just take a look around there yeah that looks okay doesn't it that looks fine we'll again we'll put 0.1 or maybe even 0.05 because it's such a small object on the on the caps that's fine and that's ready to go the last thing we've got to do we've got a circle here we've got a circle here now we know that one circle is 2.25 our other circle is 3.5 so the difference between them is 1.25 so we've got to get half of that distance so let's get the calculator we might as well do this accurately get the calculator so 2.25 oops that's not correct is it 25 plus no in fact I know what I'm trying to do I'm, you know me I'm not Mr Maths it's 3.5 minus 2.25 is 1.25 okay so that's where we've got to make our circle fit but we've got to do it halfway between the two so we've got to be able to divide this by two divide it by two and then add that to 2.25 and that gives us 2.875 and that's how our radius of our next circle 
So let's copy this one here and give that a radius of two point. Where are we? Calculator. 2.875. 0.875. And we can see that that's perfectly in the middle and that's going to work fine. We'll move this along the y axis to minus one so that it's in the center of our little uh, cylinder here. And now we're ready to arrange these cylinders along this circle. So we'll take that out of there, come up to our tools, duplicate. I think we want 15 copies because I think 16 of those should be about the right number. We'll use that for a starting point. And we're going to drop it along our circle here and we're ready to transform. Let's have a quick look. We don't need to change the alignment. That can stay at plus X. That's absolutely fine where it is. OK, let's see what we get. And that looks good to me. That looks really good. So we've got our first cylinder and we've got our cylinder copies. So they're all there and everything's fine. So our first cylinder is there. And our, that, that's our initial cylinder. So we've, we've got 16 there and it's working perfectly. So we've got those. We can just call those roller bearings or rollers. That would be fine. I don't think we need to call that anything else, actually. The circle we don't really need now, but we do need to group these into the bearing. So let's do that. Let's group these rollers into the bearing. We'll just move that up there. OK, now if we rotate the shaft, let's see what's happening. Let's just make sure things are working. And they are. That's doing what it should do. That's moving those the way I want to see them move. Now, I'm not going to make these things ro revolve. I'm, there's no real need, I don't think. And you'll see why a little bit later. But I'm not going to do any, any animation for that. But anyway, that basically completes the build for this. Everything is made. We don't need this circle anymore. But we'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just group it into the bearing as well. We'll just leave it in there. That's OK. These two guides, again, we don't really need them anymore. But I won't bother throwing them away. I'll just leave them where they are. So we'll close the cycloidal disc up, close the shaft up, just drop that in there. I'll open it again because I do need both of its elements for the animation. OK, so we're, we've done the build and everything is looking good. The next step then is to build the Espresso expression. We'll bring a null into the scene and rename it Espresso. And we can give it the Espresso tag. And we're ready to start working in here. The first things I'm going to bring in are the shaft and the bearing. And in the shaft here, I just need rotation H. That's all I need there. In the bearing, I simply need the global position. So those two are set up and ready to go. Brilliant. So the next thing to bring in is the cycloidal disc. And I need, again, rotation H. And I need global position. So that's now set up and ready to go. Let's just plumb in the global position from the bearing. And straight away, we've got a bit of an issue, haven't we? It's because the objects inside the cycloidal disk are not at the same position as the disk itself. So what we can do is remove these from here momentarily. What I'll do is move this to zero. And then we can drop these back in. And these also need to be zeroed. Let's have a look and see where we are. Now, at the moment, they they well, actual fact, they can be one. And this can be one. And now all the objects match up with each other. The disk itself is at minus one and these are at one. So that's fine. That's sorted that particular problem out. And now if we rotate the shaft, we'll find that things are moving as we think they should. So that's OK. Moving on from here, then we need to worry about rotation. Now, in order for this to work, when the shaft rotates through 360 degrees, the cycloidal disk has got to move just one tooth, so one nineteenth 
of 360 degrees and also the shaft will rotate either clockwise or anti-clockwise or maybe even counterclockwise if you're American <laughs> and the cycloidal disc will move in the opposite direction. So we need to bring in a range mapper so we'll get a hold of one of those and we need to set this up. Now the input and output ranges both need to be degree so we'll set those up first. We'll plumb in the output from the shaft into the input of the range mapper and that's set up correctly. 0 to 360. Let's work out the output range. So we'll get the calculator and we need to say that 360 divided by and it will be 19. That gives us a value of 18.947. So in here we want minus 19. What did I say it was? Oh dear me, my memory. It was 18.947, 18.947, 18 18.947. So that's our output range, but we need to put a minus sign in front of it. That's fine. Now, if we connect this to the rotation H of our cycloidal disc, nothing moves as it, and it shouldn't do at the moment because we're not rotating. So that sets that up. And if we do move, we find that our disc is working perfectly. It's lining up exactly as it should with the ring gear, which is great. That's working perfectly. The last thing we need to do is move the output assembly. So we need to bring that in. We also need to spell it correctly. I've just realized I've put a T on the end instead of a Y. Let's get that right. And essentially, we just need to give this rotation H at the input stage. So coordinates, rotation, rotation H. And if we plumb this in here, everything should synchronize now when we move it. So let's see what happens. Let's get a hold of the shaft and rotate it. And we can see that that's doing exactly what it should, should do. So that's great. That's looking really nice. I'll bring a null into the scene drop it above the shaft. I will call this cycloidal drive. And then think about grouping all of these objects into here. And now, all things being fair, we can move this anywhere in the scene and it will work. So that's all fine and dandy. Yep, all perfectly good. And of course, we can rotate it if we so wish. We can just rotate it round there and the thing will still work as it should. We just move that round there you can see that it's all good. Okay that's great all very good all working as we want it to. We'll just close the espresso down and hit H so that we can see everything. Just give ourselves a different angle. I'll give the viewport 600 frames and then select the shaft and we'll record its rotation H at frame zero at zero degrees. Click through to the end and then make this six, eight to eight degrees. And that should give us the perfect loop point and we'll click on there. Zero things out and let's see what's going on. At first we're starting slow. Now I don't want that so I'm going to go into my F curve and I will make, let's just select this shaft, I will make this linear. And now we should be ready to see the animation. So we'll run this and it's all working nicely. We can see that the output shaft is creeping round while this is whizzing round and that's exactly what should happen. Now if I just change the angle you can now see why I didn't bother animating the rotation of the actual roller bearings. There's no need. They're moving so fast that there's really no need. Admittedly, if you wanted this to, to be slower, well, perhaps you might need to play around with some maths in there and get them rotating. But I think generally speaking, you're not going to need to because you, the chances are you might even put motion blur on a render of this. So you're never really going to notice that they're not moving or that they're not rotating, let's say. 
But anyway, that's my thoughts on it. That's why I didn't do it. But that just about brings us to the end of this tutorial because we've got everything working exactly the way we want it to. And I do think that this is a really stunning piece of engineering. It's just a brilliant way to create gear reduction by using the, the minimum of components. I mean, it's a very, very clever piece of engineering, the cycloidal drive. But anyway, as I say, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this one and that it's been worthwhile doing it and that you've learned some techniques here that you can use in your own projects. And as I said, this is actually a very, very simple project, really, in terms of Espresso. It's just the build that's the really difficult part of this, actually, particularly the cycloidal disc and, of course, the ring gear. They're the really time consuming parts of it. The rest of it is actually quite simple. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this one and that you've found it worthwhile. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And of course, if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and, of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all this good stuff really does help the channel keep on moving in the right direction. But that about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.